But over these last several days, questions being asked, where are we when we no longer have to be in the here and now? When we no longer have to use our energy to be present, focused and attentive, to have no need to try to be here or there or this or that. So let's play with a little Zen psychology. Over one of the ancient temples in Japan, carved in wood, is the first principle of Buddhism. Now this was carved after the great Zen master Edo had made many copies of this in the form of calligraphy. But many of those had been destroyed because Master Edo had a student who would oversee all of his work and was a very severe, critical being of that work. And after each time, Master Edo drew the words the student would say, no, not good enough, not good enough, no, not right. But then there was a moment when the student had to go out to get more water to mix the paint with the ink. And in that moment, Master Ada dashed off the words. And when the student came back, he said, perfect, that's it, that's the one. And so this was the calligraphy that was made into the carving above the, the temple gate. And then there's a little anecdote about a samurai who was very proud of his achievements in the way of the sword. And he came into the presence of the great Zen master, Bang Sai, and he extolled to the master of his prowess after many years of discipline and practice. The samurai said, I have such ability now that I no longer even have to raise my sword to my adversary. I merely fix my eye on them, and they capitulate. Much like you do yourself when you fix your eyes on someone to assess their state of enlightenment. So Master thanks I congratulated the samurai on his achievements and his abilities. And in the very same breath, he said, now attack me. And the samurai was completely bamboozled, discombobulated, as we might say. And Bangsai said, I have delivered my blow. The samurai replied, Oh, master, your ability are much, much greater than mine. Will you teach me the way of Zen? And a third anecdote is about that student <coughs> who had been in the monastery. Perhaps it was like one of those Shaolin monasteries on the top of a mountain in Tibet, where the students learn the way of the martial arts and also the way of Zen. And this student one day went to the master and said, Master, tell me, how would you describe our school? 
And the master said, You've been here so many decades, and you still do not know our ethos. Go. Go to the temple and meditate. And do not come back until you know what it is. So the student went off to the temple and the monastery grounds and for seven days and seven nights he meditated but nothing came. But then he left the temple totally believing that he had failed in that which the Master had given him to do. But when he was in front of the Master, he said, Master, I stayed in the temple for seven days and seven nights meditating, and I believed that I had failed. But when I left the temple and went out of the temple gate, I looked up and there was a word. Could it be that this is what it is that is the ethos of our school? What is it that arises in you that is the word or even what is called the first principle of Buddhism written over the temple gates? Where are we when we no longer have a need to try to use our mind to be present here and now in some state of concentration or focus. Where are we? Can we? Claiming recognize that it is that which has been unchanging all along. The first principle, the word that describes what it is when the inner and the outer or stillness and movement meet. What is it that arises for you? A word, a phrase. It comes to your lips. Where are we when there is no longer and now